Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our talk on floral oils. Now, I think everybody enjoys getting flowers, but maybe you don't enjoy your floral oils. And it's a funny thing of how that works, because our floral oils are very potent, and they're very powerful, and they can do a lot for us. Because if we are in a room, you know, if I was teaching a class to 100 people, I could present the basic kit of oils. And just about, I would say 99 people in the room would enjoy our citrus oils. Probably 80 to 85 would enjoy the mint oils. And it'd probably be about 75 to 80 would enjoy even the tree and the grass oil. But it usually is a 50-50 shot of who enjoys the floral oil. And it's funny because people tend to have a very distinct reaction of whether they love the floral oils or they hate the floral oil. And I always find it very intriguing because they are extremely potent. They have a lot of very big properties. They're not just flowers that you put in your home or plant in your, in your grass to make things pretty. The floral oils that we offer at doTERRA have extremely beneficial properties for us. There's a reason they're beautiful. There's a reason they have incredible scents that can help us. So I want to talk about them tonight, and I want to address a couple of things. If you've been using just your basic oils, you know, your lavender, lemon, peppermint, and you really love your lemon or you really love your, your um, peppermint, well, those are citrus and mint. But if you're kind of iffy on that lavender, well, that's a, that's a funny one because it's both a mint and a floral. I'm probably going to talk about an oil tonight that if you've tried it, you may actually hate the smell of it. And that's where I want to hopefully shift your mindset as we talk about this tonight. And I want you, I invite you in the comments to offer up your questions on what some of these oils can do for you. But hopefully, as we talk, we'll, I'll address some of those issues. But the scent of the oil is just a small portion of what this oil can do for you. The potency and purity of what the oil is, if you consider that this little bottle really is just a bottle of natural medicine, the scent of it becomes somewhat of a side, of, you know, side thing. You know, yeah, you want to have beautiful flowers maybe sitting on your, you know, when they're given as a gift, but when you're thinking of it in a natural medicine way, that scent should really kind of fall off to the side and become secondary. What are the properties of this oil that can benefit me? And that's what I'm going to kind of focus on because there's a, a ton of physical and emotional properties that come with the floral oil. And I think flowers are, are a beautiful example of how maybe we should present ourselves as humans on the planet. You don't have to tell, you know, I've seen this quote come up a few, uh, few times in the last few days of, you know, never water yourself down because somebody can't handle you at 100 proof. I've seen that, the funny thing is I've seen that quote come up a few times. You don't have to tell a flower that. A flower is going to grow and be its brilliant self no matter where it grows. It can be in a, in a huge row of wildflowers or it can be in a group of flowers among its kind. It's going to bloom and shine no matter where it is. It doesn't have to be told, hey, you're this bright, brilliant rose. Be a bright, brilliant rose. Or maybe you should be felt like something else. It's going to be exactly what it is, and it's going to smell and be wonderful and appreciated for exactly what it is. So in that aspect, emotionally, 
florals tend to have that emotional aspect to them. And I think sometimes because that scent is so in your face and 50 to 70 times stronger, that's why people tend to shy away because that kind of brings people out of their comfort zone. So I want to ask you, if you don't like the florals, is that maybe one of the reasons? Because it, it begs you to be exactly what you really want to be, maybe your authentic self, but there's a whole lot of fear backing that up of what will people think if I shine brightly like my brilliant self. And I know that's kind of scary. So what do florals, you know, aside from all of that, what do florals kind of give us chemically, you know, in that Dr. Hill sense? Well, they are typically, and I'm speaking very generally, they're going to be very calming. They're going to be excellent for your skin. And they're going to be great for the immune system. Now, why is that? Well, Typically, all your florals are going to be, well, they're going to calm you down. And when you calm yourself down, you're going to reduce the cortisol levels throughout your body. When you reduce that ugly little cortisol level, which impedes weight loss, it helps your stress state, you know, up to here when it really should be way down low. High cortisol levels mean low immune system. So if you tend to get sick and your stress is high and you don't sleep, then you need to maybe look at something more than the basics. It's kind of like cooking. Salt and pepper does a lot of things for your food, but I'm going to tell you, if you want really good Mexican food, you need cumin and garlic and a few other spices. Florals kind of are like that added bonus to relaxation that will get you to the next level. You want to take, you know, everything to the next level, you have to have a bigger arsenal. So they will incorporate this into you and you can relax more, which works on a whole body level and you end up having a boosted immune system. Your skin will look better and everything will start to improve, all with the use of these little bitty flowers. And I think that's really cool. So we're gonna start tonight and I'm only gonna cover a few of them. We have a ton of floral oils at doTERRA and I'm gonna cover four of our new ones because we have four beautiful new ones. But we're gonna start with one of my near and dear favorites. If you've been on this page for any length of time, you know that um, my son was born with a, we call it the spot, and I had a blog for a very long time. And one of our floral oils was a big component in having that reduce and almost disappear on him. And we used geranium. Geranium was a fantastic oil that helped him. So, this is probably one that if you've tried it, you've smelled it, you probably have had this, either you really like the smell of geranium or you absolutely hate it. And more times than not, I hear people say, oh, I just can't stand the smell of geranium. And I kind of laugh when I hear it because the, when you pull up the Modern Essentials book, I'm just going to show you. These are all the things that are good with geranium. This is a potent little bottle. That's like saying, hey, I don't really like the look of that screwdriver. I'm going to throw it out because eh, it's the wrong color. This is like having a multi-purpose tool in your home because geranium not only is great to, to get those little capillaries on your face, if you have redness on your face, get the little capillaries, you know, back to a normal look. It also helps with liver support, hormonal support. Um, if you have your model, modern essentials book, you can break this out. 
it can help calm you down. It, it, anything blood related, geranium is going to be good for. And emotionally, I posted this on the page already, geranium is kind of one of those oils for a broken heart. It helps you heal that, that love. I mean, it, it talks about um, in here that if you don't have trust, if you don't have, you know, if your heart's been really bruised or broken, use geranium. So you can't stand the smell. Well, I'm going to tell you, mix it with something. Mix it with a citrus. I love it with citrus bliss. And that's one thing we're going to talk about at the end. Mix it with, you know, one of the citrus oils. Put them up to your nose. And smell them together and see, hey, I like this combo and this really helps me. We're going to talk about the emotions wheel here in just a second. But geranium is one of those florals that, you know, gallbladder stones. I mean, that's going to be a huge improvement. Put that with a little lemon and you're going to be helping your body tremendously from the inside out. And, you know, I, don't, I personally would care less if I just didn't. I, I would smell like a geranium plant if I felt better, personally. Hi, Sue. How are you doing? Our next, and what used to be, geranium used to be what we considered, you know, the poor man's rose. But now we have the beautiful opportunity to buy rose in the touch version. It's harder to see tonight. And this will be out October 2nd. Now, rose is the oil of divine love. So, again, this is another one that helps your heart. <clears throat> but rose also is potent for healing nerve endings, brain power. Um, there's so many things that rose can do along the lines of um, helping you. So it's not just the scent. And all along, we've had rose lotion, and it had the rose in it. It had rose oil in it. And because we didn't have the oil, you know, I really honestly didn't know that much about the oil. But this one can also help, you know, when you, when you feel more secure and more loved and more centered with the rose, oil helping to aid that, you're going to show up on the planet a lot better. So let's talk a little bit about that, because I think that's an important concept, because the physical ailments I've posted, and I can post those facts up, and they're all here in the page, but I want to show you a little tool, and this is in one of the classes that, you know, I, I can teach live when you're in person, but doTERRA has an emotions wheel. So you have the emotions wheel. You can Google this all over the place. And you're going to see over here that you've got the florals. You know, if you're looking at this and you're saying, oh, okay, then I would have to use console. Well, you don't have to use console. What it's telling you is that if you feel fearful, worry, or hurt, and you want to get back to the center, you would want to use any of your floral oils. So look in your oil bin and see what floral oils you want. You're not going to make a bad choice because really floral oils are composed of really two main components, esters and alcohol, linalool. That's a very common component. It's very calming. And when you're fearful, worried, and hurt, don't you want to be calm? That's kind of what Lenalu does, and that's kind of what it's there for. So you take this, and you say, okay, well, I want to do that, and so I'm fearful, worried, or hurt. Okay, I'm going to pair that up. And maybe you have, you know, you want, like I said, you want to be a little happier, and you want to, you know, citruses make you happier, so you put a citrus with it. And so you take, like, citrus bliss and geranium. And you put those in the diffuser. And you just, you know, make a concoction. The beauty of this is it's showing you 
if you smell it and you like it, you're not going to go wrong. You really can't screw this up. And I want, I want to make that a very big point. You really can't screw these oils up. It's not like you're going to put something in the diffuser and you're going to just ruin your day. You may not love the smell, but there's going to be some benefit there. But if you use this wheel, and like I said, you can Google it. There's more, um, there's fancier wheels out there. Um, you know, Aroma Tools came out with one that comes with the Emotions book. I'm trying to dig it out now as we speak. And it actually goes, you know, positive properties, negative properties, and it comes along with the Emotions book. You know, this is a great combo to get. And I, I suggest getting all of, you know, getting stuff like this off of Aroma Tools or, or my or Oil Life, something like that. Because it'll teach you that, hey, you know, I can handle my emotions. I can handle some of these things just by using this. And it makes it really, really easy to help your body, help your family, and make yourself feel a little better. Because I've heard the stories that, you know, if you hate the smell of an oil, it's totally what you need. But then I've heard it from the same level of expert that says that's a total false indication. So I don't really know. I know from observing people that people who totally reject an oil, just by watching them, I tend to lean to the, you probably need it. Just saying. I don't have scientific proof of that. I have my gut instinct. And people who, because watching men reject floral oils, knowing that they open the heart and open the floodgates of feeling, and knowing that culturally men are told you're not allowed to feel, you're not allowed to cry, you're not allowed to do this, and these oils may invoke that kind of response out of a man, I can see that they would want to avoid opening that box, you know, taking that key and unlocking that box. And I can see how women would do the same thing where maybe they've been told you're too sensitive, you're too emotional, you're too this, and you've, you've learned over time to not do that because Somebody's told you along the way that you're wrong for having feelings. You're wrong for doing this. You need to be, you know, shiny and pretty and whatever. So smelling a, a floral oil and having that feeling come in feels very uncomfortable. And therefore you say, oh, no, 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 I don't like that. It may be evoking some sort of feeling that you can't actually describe, but it may be evoking a feeling that's unlocking some sort of something in you that says, oh, no, wait, we're going to stop this. That's just from my own personal observation. There is no scientific backing of that. It's just watching people. So if that resonates with you, you know, I invite you to get uncomfortable. Be your authentic self and open your, your floral oil. Our next one we're going to talk about, I think, is just a cool oil because it turns everything blue. And that's blue tansy, also known as Moroccan chamomile. So you can see from the lid, it's got a very inky blue, it leaves a very inky blue residue. You can see on my finger. Now, it doesn't last very long. This one, as I said earlier, things that are great for the skin. Blue tansy is excellent for the skin. So you'll see people that you've probably seen them online. They were there at night. They'll do their whole routine, and then they will blue tansy their face. I think this has a very fruity smell. I've heard everything from Parmesan cheese, which I, I don't get to cherry pie. I kind of understand the cherry pie one, to be honest with you. 
but it's very calming. And I find that this oil is, um, as I'm doing more and more research, and I haven't gotten my total book on this one, um, this one is very calming. It helps you to uh, just take inspired action. If you're not feeling like the, re the need to get up and go, Blue Tansy is going to give you the courage to do so. I think it's ironic, but not really ironic, that it's also in our balance blend and deep blue. So emotionally, it's in two blends that kind of even you out, but keep you grounded and ready to move. Now you won't stay blue if you put it with other oils. So if I, you know, if I rub it with a little rose right now, especially with having the yeah, still a little blue, you put a little rose over the top, rub it in, and you'll go back to. I mean, I'm kind of translucent as it is, but you rub it with any other oil and some coconut oil, and you will not have the blue smurf-like look to yourself. Blue tansy is, um, it smells great diffused, and it is, um, it's just really calming, and I feel like when you use this one, you end up just kind of having a shift in perspective. You stop procrastinating. You get on your activities, and you stop resisting that urge to change. And I think that's important, especially if if you're in that, if you're ready to make those changes. So I love that Blue Tansy is kind of there for that. And then there's all kinds of other things that, you know, you can pair it with um, all the pain oils. Because it's in deep blue, it's, it's good to calm those things down and help aid in any kind of pain and calming and that sort of thing. I haven't tried it for sleep yet, but it is just, I like it during the day. I think it smells really, really nice. Neroli. This is an amazing little oil. And I know many of you have been looking for this one for a very long time. It is from the bitter orange tree, and it is the flowers of the bitter orange tree. So it has kind of a light orange citrusy Smell. I don't know if any of you have ever been in an orange grove when it's blooming because it smells just like that, just the orange blossom. And it's an amazing smell when it happens because it's not, you know, it's not the smell of orange, but it's a very citrus floral smell to it. It's light, but it's very pungent. And this oil has some pretty amazing properties. And I've got them both on my phone and here um, in the book. So, you know, I posted in the group that it can really help you with feelings of anxiousness. It can really help with the skin. It can help with anxious mood. I mean, things that we've already talked about. This one is extremely high in linalool. So it can really help with memory. So if you are needing to remember, needing to boost that and help yourself remember, it's a great oil for that. And then what's funny is how it translates to emotion. emotion. It helps you remember if you've been in, you know, it helps you strengthen partnerships. So if you kind of lost why you remember, you know, helps you remember why you fell in love with somebody, helps you, you know, drop the bitterness and pick up the love that you once had. Those are things Neroli can help you with. And I think that's kind of a beautiful thing. Um, but it's excellent for your skin, and there's so many things that you can do with it. This one's another one that will be available October 2nd. The, the last new one we have is jasmine. And this one, you know, rose and jasmine were always around that you could win them by, and earn them, not win them, but earn them 
by enrolling people. And now we have this ability to truly get them via, you know, all year long. Jasmine is excellent for your blood pressure. So you can roll it right over, you know, right over your heart area. And with it being in the touch version, it's perfect. I mean, you just don't even have to think about it because Jasmine's perfect for that. It's great for digestion. It's great. Um, Jasmine just has a lot of different um, qualities about it and pulling them, some of them up again. But they are, um, again, it's another uplifting mood, great skin. But the blood pressure is the one big thing. It can also help with labor and menstrual cramps, which, hallelujah, wouldn't this have been nice? I'm not having any more kids, and I really didn't go into labor, so I don't know why I'm talking about this. But some of you did, and you probably would have enjoyed having this around. So Jasmine, but I know cramps are no fun either. So Jasmine can be a really nice one to have in your life. And you just roll it right over your abdomen to help soothe that. And it can help. Jasmine's really potent. It can, you know, it doesn't take very much to get through the entire body and really help support the entire body. But this oil emotionally because we're talking so much about how the floral oils can help you emotionally, is the oil of sexual purity and balance. So aren't we ending just on a fun note? So if you have any repression, if you've had any trauma, um, it can help cultivate a more positive experience in that way. Because I know not everybody's got a beautiful experience in life in that aspect. Um, and I'm sorry if you haven't had a great experience in that way. It's not, it's not cool. And I, I feel bad for people. I mean, we have the hope oil, which is to help get people out of, you know, the sex trade. And these people probably need a lot of jasmine when they're done. But it helps provide, um, the positive properties of it are, um, pure intentions, innocent feeling, self-acceptance, self -acceptance, trust, and feeling safe. So those are some really big properties that Jasmine can do and help you with. And it smells, you know, it's another one that just smells really, really potent. It's a potent smell. And it, I think it's a beautiful smell. One little tip, when you put rose and neroli together, it smells like honeysuckle. So there's another little cute tip. And finally tonight, we're going to talk about one that we're just happy that is back and back in a solid way, and that's Roman chamomile. This is like an, a really potent calming oil, and it was out of stock for so long, and so many people miss this one. Crops get damaged, crops freeze, crops flood, and it really can throw a whack into a lot of, um, a lot of people's, you know, protocols when you can't have your Roman chamomile. But this one, if you have babies teething, you put it right along the jawline, and it's perfect for baby, baby teething. Roman chamomile, if you have trouble sleeping and, and lavender's not cutting it for you, Roman chamomile is your next step. Um, I know a lot of people will go to vetiver and cedarwood, and I, I highly suggest those, but I also think Roman chamomile is one of the most potent, calming sleep oils that you can get. It is it's just a, you know, it only comes in the five milliliter bottle. It is a potent little bottle one drop with your cedar wood and you're in good shape <clears throat> in your diffuser all night. I love Roman chamomile. So I highly suggest you, if you do have sleep issues, you give this one a try. If you have where you need to really calm your nervous system, you give Roman chamomile a try. 
And then emotionally, just to talk about that a little bit, Roman chamomile is your oil of spiritual purpose. So if you don't feel like you have a purpose on this planet, if you feel like you're walking around and you just don't know what you're supposed to be doing, put this one over, you know, put it over your forehead, put it behind your ears. You know, one drop, rub it back here, and then try and get yourself very centered. Meditate, pray, whatever it is that makes you feel very centered and very present. Define what your purpose is on the planet, because we all have a purpose. We're all meant to be a bright, shining star in our own way. You're an individual flower. It doesn't matter if you're in a field of wildflowers. If you're the blue flower, and there's a red flower, and a purple flower, and a yellow flower, everybody's got beauty. And it's okay to be completely different than the flower next to you. I think the more people can embrace that about each other, the better off we'll be. That we all have different gifts. We all have different things that we can bring to the table. And when you can use different things, you know, like a Roman chamomile to find your purpose and what you have to bring to this world, you can then have an ability to change it. If you're walking around trying to be the carbon copy of somebody else, you're never going to change anything. You have to be your authentic self. And I think floral oils are really one of the best ways to tap into that. So there's many, many more out there, from lavender to um, helichrysum to melissa, many more. Dive into your book, you know, your modern essentials book, your essentials of the earth book. Use Google. There's plenty of places to get great information about the different oils. Use the doTERRA website. In the living part of the doTERRA website, they have tons of information on each essential oil. I invite you to all to take a look at all of those. Find out what a little bit about an oil each, you know, month or each week, whatever you have time for. And then use that oil. Buy that oil and use that oil and see how it transforms you. If you have questions, you know that's what we have the whole group for. But I have a question for the group, and we're going to do a little drawing um, for this little blend on Saturday. It's called the Heart and Hustle. Now, this blend was given to me by Tiffany Peterson. She is my, um, she's been my success coach for a couple of years. And we attended an event, and she handed us this little blend. But I'm going to give it to one of you who will be willing to share on this thread, number one, your favorite floral oil, and two, what it's done for you. So share those two pieces of information here, and I'll do a drawing for it on Saturday. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. I hope you all learned just a little bit more about our floral oils and why you should tap into them. They're more than just a pretty vape. Have a great night.